Today's guest is Bob Doyle. He's best known as a featured expert in the film and book, The Secret. And so this is so cool to talk to him, guys, because he's been doing this for a long time. And he's basically, he's talking about how he's taking away the focus on law of attraction so much and focusing more on neuroplasticity. And his take is so awesome. So awesome. He just nails it. You know, you can tell he's been doing this for a while. Just every message just delivers with so much impact. I know you guys are going to really enjoy this episode. Um, So he now focuses his coaching and training on neuroplasticity and, and your ability to rewire your own brain so that you can become the person who creates the results in your life without having to adopt and into this like belief system of how like vibration and frequency and all this stuff works. It's like, it's so down to business. It's so good. And he has a a quiz. I did it before the show is very helpful. He has a quiz on his website. It's meetbobdoyle.com slash rewire. Now, if you want to get started on this path, but man, I love this stuff. It's just so good. Like so good. You guys are going to love this episode. Here is Bob Doyle. Okay. So Bob, as I was preparing for this interview, I was like, you know what? I don't even want to deal with the people who don't believe in law of attraction. If I get the opportunity to interview a law of attraction expert, like I'm going to go straight into like all the good stuff. <laughs> I'm like, you guys can catch up. You know, that's where I was at kind of, I'm like, cause I know so many people because I talk about this openly on social media. I'm like, there's so many people who get it right. There's so many of us that are like, they've tried one little thing and they get it. And I know I was telling you before we started, I'm like, man, I can only imagine being featured in the secret. I can only imagine what you've experienced in terms of like the rejection, the hate, the love, the, you know, (laughs) over the years. Yeah. Well, thanks for for being empathetic. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And, you know, for me, like law of attraction, basically in a nutshell came from hitting the lowest low of my life, getting introduced to Bob Proctor's work. Uh, five or six months later, uh, being introduced to one of his top coaches through a totally random, not unconnected way to, you know, getting into all that work and just watching what I call the magic carpet ride of life unfold that happens when you start to understand these things. But I love that you said before we started, you started talking more in terms of neuroplasticity now. And, you know, I think most of us can connect on that. So I think that's really smart. And can you talk about, why you made that transition and, you know, what, if you had to summarize real quick, we'll, we'll bring people on board, what neuroplasticity is oh, sure. and what uh, law of attraction kind of is and how those two things merge. Okay. I'd well, neuro, neuroplasticity is just our ability, the ability for our brain to change, to grow new, new neural pathways, to learn new things. And that's, that's the gist of what we're doing in personal transformation is yeah. we're learning to be a new version of ourselves. Right. which will then get different results. So that's a very grounded, everybody can understand that. There's no woo-woo, yeah. there's no metaphysics. You don't have to understand <laughs> vibration or anything. <laughs> and when I would talk about the law of attraction, I would say that we attract into our experience those things with which we're in vibrational resonance. Now you and I understand what I'm talking about, Yeah. but a lot of people are like, okay, what? Right. And so I, I took great pleasure for 20 years in explaining what, like I loved talking about it and because it, it, it absolutely changed my life learning about this stuff. And, and I yeah. should say that, you know, this was not my career, career objective. I always <laughs> wanted to be a broadcaster and just be a goofball and stuff. And, and I got I sidestepped into this industry because I, like you, hit a low and I'm like, what, where, where were the answers? And, and I found the answers in some aha moments around the law of attraction. And my, in my mm-hmm. excitement, I became sort of a facilitator at first. And then I just sort of let it flow. Like I said, you know what, I'm, I'm, this is where I'm going to be. So I just kind of this love conduit it. of this law of attraction information. It grew into this ginormous program, which got me found on the secret, but so 20 years of teaching this stuff and, you know, people get mixed results at best. Would you agree? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Definitely. And so, and, and because it's, it's, they're so focused and this is what I'm realizing after looking at, it, they're so focused on getting the law of attraction, right? Like, and there's so many different opinions about how you're supposed to do it. Right. Do this, do this, this seven times three, 11, whatever the numbers, you know, mm. do all these tricks. <laughs> but at the end of the day, if your life changes, it's going to be because you inside you transformed so that you would then take different action on the outside world to get different results. That is yep. not to say the law of attraction is not powerfully at work in all of that, mm. but we don't need to think about that. We need to mm. think about what is our vision? right? That's a good law of attraction stuff. And who do we want to be in that vision? Who do we need to be 
to have that vision. And a lot of people with the law of attraction focus everything on the outside. Let me just get the stuff mm, right. and not understanding yeah. that, that well, to <laughs> sustain that stuff, you, you realize you're going to have to be a different person because who you're being now isn't getting that stuff. Yeah. So it's this, so I can now talk about powerful lasting transformation where you actually, you absolutely get what you want, but on a totally science level, no leaps. Now, for those who want to talk about law of attraction, I'm happy to do it because once they really get this, they understand the law of attraction at its most basic form and why we don't have to be throwing so much, I got to get it, energy at it. It's about mm -hmm. us, right? So mm -hmm. that's why it just it facilitates transformation so much faster. I can talk to everybody about it. There's yeah. no need to debate anything. Right. Yeah. And, it, and it works really fast. I mean, compared. I, lo I love that. I love that because you're saying it's like it gets confusing for people. Right. And even as like, you know, I started my career in personal training alone. Right. And it's the same thing. It's like, well, I don't need to tell them that they have a kinetic chain and then they, the muscles attached to these little the origin and insertion point. It's like just uh arch your back a little bit more. That's it. Right. And so you're talking right. about like, what can people actually do in terms of, uh, affecting change in their life without getting caught up in the confusing parts, right. That maybe they don't need to understand. And in terms of law of vibration though, I just have to say, I'm like, everybody does know they do. You do know that you attract things on your saint that resonate with your vibration. Cause the simple example I give is like, you meet people all the time and how come some people you're just, it's just not a match, just not an energy match. Like something about their energy is just like, we are not going to be friends. Like that's just, that's to me, like a really simple example of like how we are, uh, uh, you know, attracting or saying yes to things that are on a similar frequency as us just by well, and meeting that, people. And that we are energetic beings and we can yeah. pick up on stuff like that because a yes. lot of people would think that's, that's just woo woo stuff. Right. But it's at our most basic form, everything in the universe is vibration and frequency. We're amazing. We're, human beings are a freaking miracle. We're taking this ocean of energy, yeah. which is basically empty space, and we're interpreting it through this incredible thing called our brain. And it's creating our experience of reality, every single aspect yeah. of it. And most importantly, in terms of the work I do, what are we making it mean? What are we making it all mean? Right. Well, we're all having moments. Right. And we're assessing on some level, am I enjoying this? Am I not? Am I there yet? Am I on my way? What? Is, I mean, we're, we're constantly sort of evaluating how our life is going. It's just happening mm -hmm. automatically. Mm -hmm. And all of that is based on the meaning that we're giving the situation yes. that is that moment. 100%. And that meaning, what, how we connect the dots and create meaning is all based on our brain's wiring. Mm -hmm. how it was programmed from the beginning and how that program mm -hmm. has evolved. And that creates the lens through which we see the world. But the basic truth here is that your lens is different than mine, than different than down the street. And so everybody has their own version of truth. And when we can really get that, that it's not because they're stupid or they're stubborn or they're whatever, this is, this is how they were wired. This has always been their truth and everybody's doing the best they can. They're connecting dots and creating this reality. It doesn't jive with yours. Well, their, yours doesn't jive with them. Mm -hmm. The idea is how do we make our experience of reality the best, most rewarding it can? Because we have the potential to do anything. Our brain is ready to learn to do anything if we give it this, the right information. But so many of us are on autopilot giving ourselves disempowering thoughts that we picked up along the way as truths, which are in a biological level, just cre make, making those neural pathways stronger and stronger so that when you're triggered, you just automatically default to those negative thought patterns, those disempowering thought patterns, not because you're weak, not because you're not spiritual, not because you're unintelligent. It's just that's how you were programmed. The good news is, is you can reprogram and that's what I help people do. But you first have to realize just how programmed you are so that you can identify the programs that need changing. Right. right. And that's what I was going to ask you, right? Because so much of this happens unconsciously, right? Like somebody looks at you a certain way. And, you know, if you have this belief system that people think I look ugly and fat, it's like, oh, that's why they were looking at me. Or if you have a belief system that everyone thinks I'm beautiful, it's like, oh, they must think I'm beautiful. Right. And it's just this incredibly unconscious thing. So mm -hmm. let's say, I mean, I think what brings somebody into a place of wanting to rewire their brain is they're getting a result in their life that they're not happy with. Right. Yes. <laughs> Whether it's professionally relationships, whatever. So in terms of, you know, starting point for somebody, it's like, 
how, cause I do a lot of this work. I do a lot of the work of Byron Katie, you know, Victor Frankl's like between stimulus and response, there is a space, you know, I meditate, like I've, I'm inviting in a lot of these things in my life. Um, but you know, so many people out there, they're like, oh, it's living, they're living in the reactionary yes. mind. Right? right. And so where do you recommend people start in terms of even being able to see any of what we're talking about? Well, <laughs> the first thing I do with people is I kind of, I give them, if I'm going to work with them, I give them a little quiz, which basically helps to shine some light on their autopilot behavior. Some of their wiring that they may not be aware of. They may be aware of some, like I'm sure we all know, oh, I always do this, but sometimes we don't know. And right. those are the ones where that we need to, that, that are tricky because we won't even look outside any possibility or whatever right. if, we, if we're considered a truth. But if we can see that, wow, this thought pattern is not truth, it's just our wiring, then we have the freedom to change. So identifying mm -hmm. what are the patterns that are disempowering is, is the first thought. Mm -hmm. Understanding at least on some level where you how you want things to be different right by not hating what you've got but creating right. from scratch a new thing because yeah. you have to and again this is so simple your brain this that's creating your reality basically is is the way that it is because of the thoughts that you are consistently giving it persistently and consistently even on a subconscious level so this whole idea that i'm going to take 10 minutes in the morning to visualize or whatever, and then that's it. Yeah. And I'm going to go right through my day, or I'm going to check in with my personal development exercise, but the rest of the day, you just allow yourself to go into autopilot, go down the negative roads, all those things. And then you say the program isn't working. Right. Biology, it, you have to be, your brain won't change if yep. you keep, you know, and this is, this is a big problem in personal development because people jump from program to program before they can get any wiring in place to see a result. Mm -hmm. But that's, again, we've just been trained to, it should happen fast if it doesn't go on to the next thing. I love what you're saying. And yeah, like the, the woman I've been working with on the work of Byron Creative, we're like four years plus in, wow. and it's tempting, I think to be like, well, man, I just, I'm in such a better place now I'm done. I'm like, no, dude, there's always more. There's a, and I, like, you're kind of hinting at there's blind spots. Like we, it's really hard to see your own blind spots when you're in a belief system. Right. And it takes a skill ninja to kind of help you get in there, which is obviously what you do. You know, it's like, it's, let me open up and put a little flashlight in there with you for a second. Right. It it's sounds, a scary space sometimes. Sorry. Yeah, It sounds professionally <laughs> self-serving to say you need help from the outside. But the fact of the matter is no, that you're once you get to the limits of your wiring and it doesn't matter how smart or enlightened, it doesn't mm -hmm. matter any of that. You're at the limits of your wiring. You have mm -hmm. accessed everything, you know, you've mm -hmm. you've racked your brain, you've accessed all of your data, your history and you're stuck and mm -hmm. it's because you can't make a different meaning out of this moment but somebody right. else can somebody right. else can and show you different ways to be different ways to think then you've got to again our brain is the most powerful reality creation machine ever ever it's it's it really is the only one if you think about it in terms of humans this is what is creating our reality we have and we have the ability to change it and just if anybody is doubting that on any level if you've learned a new language, if you've learned a new recipe, if you've learned a new skill, if you've picked up a musical instrument, any time in your life, if it's become ingrained in you, it's because your brain has changed. Yeah. You can change your brain. If you look back at who you were 10, 15, 20 years ago, I promise you, there are some fundamental things in your being that have shifted as, the, as you go through life. So of course you can change. What we're talking about is being intentional about it. Instead of letting life just change you, you get to say, you know right. what, I'm done with these thought processes that are keeping me here let's create some new one and is it gonna be really uncomfortable and seem weird and like you're lying to yourself and crazy at first of course of mm -hmm. course it is because mm -hmm. you haven't gone there before and that mm -hmm. craziness or that it's too big that that stops most people right there that how could it possibly happen i don't see how it could happen this is mm -hmm. the high pie in the sky thinking mm -hmm. I, i'm gonna go right back to just trying so hard and it does not have to be that way mm -hmm. yeah i feel the same way i i, I think most uh, probably most of my listeners have gotten to the point where it's like, no, dude, I know that it's wise to invest in a coach of some sort to help me see what I'm not seeing. All, all every high performing human being I know, usually the most high performing ones have a bunch of coaches, like all sorts of stuff, right? Because you're exactly right. Like I always say, if you would have, if you could have gotten there already, you would have, there's something out of left field. And that's how I feel about myself too. I'm like, there's something I don't even know to even think about or ask, or like, you know, that's it's, right. you it's don't new know information. You don't know. It's, <laughs> yeah. it's so true. You live inside your bubble of truth. And even though you think you've got it, 
Yours right. is different than other people's. And if yours isn't serving you, if your what you've told yourself, if this reality that you have constructed mm -hmm. in your mind isn't serving you, you're not trapped there. Mm -hmm. You just have to learn to make different meaning out of different things. See yourself being a different person and then try that on and let the world adjust. Anytime yeah. anybody wants to create anything, whether it's an invention or themselves, it is iteration after iteration yes. after iteration, feedback, yep. constant, oh, yep. I failed. No, you got feedback. And if you do something with it, you'll keep going and you'll get there. 10,000 mm -hmm. attempts to the light bulb before we got it, right? But if you get stopped at mm -hmm. seven, like most people would on their personal transformation goals, like I tried seven times to start a business, it didn't work. So, so you're going to just quit then. Then I promise yeah. you, you'll never get there. You'll never do it. Well, so and I guarantee just, there was a belief underneath all seven of those times too, that it wasn't going to work. Right. It was tied in there. Validation. That's right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Cause like for me, I, I, I didn't know anything about mindset when I used to be overweight and got fit. I, I don't know. I just like, I like to play mind tricks on myself. I just made it up. <laughs> like I was just like, I'm just going to pretend that I'm fit today. And I'm just going to, I'm just going to do that. And I'm just, I'm, I like literally just like intentionally went quote unquote delusional in my mind. And I was like, I'm a super fit person. I'm a super fit person. I'm a super fit person. What does my super fit self do now? What is my super, you know, and that's exactly what we were talking about with that repetition and it worked and it worked fast. Okay. So what you just <laughs> said, if everybody could just get that, like really get that, that's how you do it. That is yeah. how you do it. Then everybody can change themselves. <laughs> it's that, but they go, well, I'm faking it. I'm lying to myself. St get that layer of conversation out of there. We're yeah. talking about, we're not talking about what you appear to be in the physical. We're talking about who you are and yep. you get to decide whether you're yep. a fit person, body be damned. It doesn't, it doesn't right. know yet. I know. You've now decided that you're going to. And now, as you said, you're going to do the things the fit person does, not the thing the overweight person is trying to do. Trying, to try to, right, the dangling you carrot. Be, yes, you become <laughs> that fit person and mm -hmm. you do what they do. You think how they think, yep. they talk how you talk. That's it, mm -hmm. that's it. If everybody mm -hmm. can just really get that, oh, mm -hmm. it can't be that simple. That's exactly how it is. Yep. But the problem is we complicate it with layers and layers and layers of this conversation that right. dismantles right. all of that. Right. Yeah. I call it closing the gap. That's what I've learned to call it. It's just like, you just become that person now. And it really is that simple. And, but you, what you hit on is so important is the consistency, even with self-talk, right? Like this has been my advice for two different clients this week is like, you're in a really great place with that. You're just keep like well-managed. You just keep kind of teetering back into that old pattern of I'm a bad person. I'm a, like, so just when that comes up, we just got to keep repatterning the new healthy thought over and over and over and over until the old one dies. And that's the same thing that happened to me with getting, it's just like, of course I had moments where the old patterns came up and I was like, no, I call it like having boundaries in your own mind, right? It's like, no, we're not doing that. We're not entertaining that program anymore. We're in this one, right? So it takes a lot of repetition. And, and on a biological level, that's what you do. You interrupt the old pattern yeah. and then you replace it with a new one. And then at night, your, your brain says, you know what? She's putting way more attention on this now. Maybe we should start throwing some stuff because mm -hmm. that's when all, all it happens. So yeah, it's repetition. But again, everything you learned in your life required yeah. repetition and mistakes and feeling like all of it every single thing so why should this be different and but they have different standards well the guy the program said 30 days and i have a new me geez we don't know how you're wired we don't know what right. we got to dismantle in there we don't know right. there's no way anybody can tell you how long it's going to take you to rewire <laughs> there's I just feel no this way so much i feel this so much people are like how long is it going to take till i hit my fitness goal i'm like dude Anybody who's telling you that is like, I'm sorry, but they're lying because like, I don't know, we, there, there's so much we have, might have to work through inflammation, gut issues, all your emotional stuff. Like, I, you know what I mean? I do because <laughs> my journey started as a personal trainer too. And, and it was the same, like I, they're all doing the same stuff. They're all following my directions. This guy isn't budging. Right. What's the story? But when he came in, he was always, well, you know, I guess I'm, and you, that was it. He was not the fit person. He's mm -hmm. this guy who nothing works for, mm -hmm. who's tried everything. And so it doesn't matter what he eats. It doesn't matter how hard he works. That's, he's not going to allow himself to be.
yep. that other person. And that's that was pivotal for me. And it really, that's when I stopped, mm -hmm. when I got out of the gym and into a bigger space of, yeah. you know, hey, what's the bigger picture about life? And that's what eventually led me to the law of attraction. So awesome. And I, it's, I, I, I'm glad that you have that background too, because I find there's so many awesome analogies. Like we think of rewiring the brain. Well, it's like, okay, well, if you're going to build your biceps, it's the same thing. It's not going to just happen from once every three months, I do one bicep rep. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it's that same thing and it's going to be uncomfortable. And it's like, ah, you're not very good at it at first. And you just keep going and keep going, you know? So I love that you have that background and then now you've applied it to how we see ourselves. And I love your example of the guy that comes in with his head down. Cause Oh yeah. my gosh, we all get like that. I get like that too. Like in business sometimes. And I'm like, ah, no, 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 we're not running that program anymore. We're in this you know, program. <laughs> and while we're on the subject of the body, it's important to realize that your body remembers stuff too. Your body, like when you get triggered, mm -hmm. you feel it, right? You're, you mm -hmm. get chemicals, you feel it in various places mm -hmm. in your body. So it's also got some rewiring to do as well. So that's why, you know, and, and when like you, people can listen to us, have this conversation go, yeah, I get that. I'm triggered and, and I'm going to be on the lookout for my autopilot behavior, right? Or uh -huh. when I get triggered, but when you get triggered, depending on what the trigger is, you can know all that intellectually, but your body takes yeah. over. And you shoot out all those chemicals and you go, no, I'm trying to be present. Ah, you know, mm -hmm. and so having tools that help you in that moment to mm -hmm. take back control of your physiology, like breath work is a simple one mm -hmm. that you can do at any time, right? Mm -hmm. that, that people just overlook. Oh, that's too simple. No, no, no. You can throw your body into the parasympathetic state in seconds if you yeah. just breathe a certain way. And you need to do that. Look, the chemicals that got to metabolize. But if you sit there and focus on how bad you feel and how worried and anxious, you're just producing more. And now it's just, you know, mm -hmm. the goal is, okay, yeah, I'm triggered and I feel it and boo. So you do some breath and then you, you take over and you get present again and then you replace that thought. But understanding that all of this is going to be part of the process and that it's normal. And the reason that it feels so much like this is because we are being intentional about it. We're not letting mm -hmm. life dictate how we evolve. We're going to mm -hmm. do it. And when we make that decision, then of course, all of our old wiring is going, that's not who you are. And, and, and so that's why we feel all the things. And, mm -hmm. and most people quit at some point for some reason, you know, and it's mm -hmm. not just because the new program came along. It's whatever their stuff is. That's why we give the quiz mm -hmm. to show the early indicators of what might make you quit so that you can be on the lookout for that. Okay. Two things. First is I have to vouch for honestly, the work that you do, because when you talk about, I, Doing um, the work of Byron Katie, one of the questions is always, how do you feel? What do you, what are you feeling in your body when you believe that stressful thought? And so it's made me very aware of like, okay, like embarrassment is kind of like right here in my neck. So like when I feel that, it's like, dude, what are you embarrassed about? Right? Like, so because the body will come in before without even my conscious thoughts. So that's been helpful. But I've, I have times too, where I'm like, I was about to have a very hard conversation that I was scared. It was like all the old patterns. I was scared to have this conversation and I could just feel my, my body was getting hot. It was all the feelings of like, just adrenaline, right? It was like, wow, you're, you're scared <laughs> to have this conversation. And I just, I mean, I did my breath work. I started talking to my body, talking to myself. I'm like, it's okay. You're safe. Like all this stuff. I couldn't quite get there all the way. I had to go do a session and I doing that session with my coach completely transformed how I was seeing that entire situation in the body stuff went away after that. So I'm just first, just want to make a like push for honestly, like the work that you do, because it is so hard. I do mindset work for a living, but sometimes it's like, I can't figure out what this is, this fear yes. thing, this story, like it's hard to find them sometimes. So it is really nice to have a pair of skilled ninja hands helping you out with that. Sometimes. Yes. And also sometimes people, and I'm not saying this is you in this case or anything, but I do find that, and this is huge in the law of attraction space. People fixate so much on what's my problem. Yeah. What's, the, what's my issue? I, I, I got to figure that. Out. And mm -hmm. then they keep telling me, well, I got this issue with it. Would you stop telling me that? Stop telling yourself that. Stop telling right. anybody that. The, it, no. And I get why people do it. Mm -hmm. They just want to kind of a set, set. This has been my challenge at this point. So I give them the one time, but you can't keep coming to me and telling me that, well, I just can't, I have a problem with commitment. Stop right. saying that. You right. Know, it, right. It, 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 Cause you, you will live into that to be yeah. in integrity with your lack of integrity. It's crazy yeah. how we do this. It's but, so you know, true. It, yeah. And, and even, it's just the simplest things. Even kind of paralleling Bruce Lipton's work with the bio, uh, biology of belief. Like I'm the same with my clients that say, I have Lyme, chronic Lyme. I have 
hypothyroidism. I'm like, we're not going to say that anymore. I know we have your labs. We have all that stuff, but we're not going to say that anymore. We're going to say my body is healing. My body is thriving. My body will let me know what it needs. And it's been really incredible to watch how that has manifested in biology. Seriously. I have watched symptoms go from severe to barely there from belief systems and also letting the body lead. It's like, what do you need? Okay. You need more sleep, like that kind of stuff. But the, you're so right. Like if we keep saying, I'm poor, I'm fat. I have the, like that, that we're creating a reality with that. Yes. Sustaining <laughs> the, the biggest thing is the stories. The hardest thing is to give up the stories. Well, here's all the reasons I'm where I am and why I can't get any further. My mom and my dad and the job and the spouse and the C and I was this and that, and they did this to me. So, mm. so you see now why, and it's like, all right, you have mm. to, you, the person you want to be isn't telling that story. They can't, mm. they're not going to get and have and be and do all the things they want with that freaking story. And by the way, that story is a series of conclusions you made, meaning you made based on your wiring and there's no truth to it. Events happened, but what you made it mean certainly about you and your potential is all made up. So mm -hmm. don't, 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 you know, there's no need to grieve over giving up that lie of a story to create another story that you feel is not true. You can make this one true, feel as true as this one, but you got to keep telling a different story about how empowering things are for you and how easy and why do things happen so well? Why is it that I keep meeting all the right people at the right time? How is it that I can turn what most people would turn into a negative and into an opportunity? Because yeah. the questions that you ask your brilliant freaking mm -hmm. genius brain Mm -hmm. is the questions it will answer. Mm -hmm. So if you keep asking crappy questions like, why does this keep happening to me? Right. It'll give you all those answers, point to all the evidence, the action you took, the things you did or didn't do. But if you just ask better questions, mm -hmm. your brain will say, oh, let me get right on that. Mm -hmm. Because it's really smart. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's okay. really a miracle. And it will give you what you want if you'll let it. But you have to ask it better questions. Mm. I love that. A friend, of, a friend of mine, Tony Child, he's a mindset coach as well. He does a lot of, a lot of law of attraction coaching. And he says that um, the quality, he's just talking about coaching, but he's like the quality of a coach is by the quality. You can tell the quality of a coach by the quality of the questions they ask. And I love that. I think about that a lot as a coach, you know, and you're just in terms of self-coaching, think about the quality of the questions we're asking ourselves in terms yes. of, you know, how, you know, I, I, have you read the little book of affirmations? It's kind of along that a line long time ago. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's like, how did I achieve yes. this? How, you know, and then exactly. your brain will start looking for the answers. Yeah. <laughs> and, and look, people can think that that's woo woo if they want to, but they're missing an amazing opportunity. Yeah. It's biology. It's the miracle that is your brain. Ask yeah. it something and it'll yeah. look for those answers. But we've yeah. been trained to yeah. ruminate over things. Why did this happen to me? You know, I got to figure it out so it won't yeah. happen again. You know, right. and then and we just get stuck and stuck and stuck. And, and then it becomes their identity. And that's where I was getting at. The mm. hard thing about stories and giving them up is without that story, who am I? I've been telling that story my entire life or this series of stories without it. I don't then let's freaking create who you are. That is yeah. one of the reasons people don't move forward because they haven't replaced in their mind even better stories, like make it yeah. worth what, if, what is it that's going to make it worth living into? You've got to, I, I say from the beginning, especially if you're taking on something significant, you got to make it non-negotiable because if it's just sort of like, that'd be cool. You're, you're not going to be able to fight yeah. all of your wiring that comes up, especially if you're trying to do it by yourself. Mm. You know, it's got to be like non-negotiable, yes. like walking yes. and talking and all those other things that right. we did that we took our bruises and didn't, <laughs> and it just, we just did it and we made all the mistakes and we didn't complain. And we didn't say the universe doesn't want it for us just because we made a ton of mistakes. Right. So if we could just look at the, so if we can make our other goal as non-negotiable as that, then what the re results are nothing but positive because yeah. even if they don't get this, the result we want, and it feels like we take steps back, we got new information and it's more yeah. than we had the, just the iteration ago. And if we choose to, we can do something with it and move forward. Yeah. Yeah. The victim stories you're hitting on there of, well, I don't have this because of this, this, that I used to live in the victim mindset completely total oh, codependent people, please are victim mindset, everything, you know, and it was shocking to see how quickly, like, I feel like we do that because then we don't have to take accountability. We don't have to change. It seems easier, but like, I was shocked by how quickly once my coach, this one I've been referencing, like turned it on my head and helped me see that I was like, not being honest, lying, like, you know, lying by not speaking my truth and people pleasing and all these things. 
once I took accountability for my life and it wasn't anybody else's fault anymore, it was the most exciting thing ever. So it's like, we we're scared of this thing. Cause now we're going to have to own it, but it's like literally within days, almost, it feels like it's like so invigorating. Can you speak right. on that? Well, how distant there's nothing more disempowering than giving your control over to somebody else. You know, yeah. there's that part of your brain that the, the chemical that's released when you say, you see why yeah. like you're, you get to be right. Right. But that's the only reward you get. Mm. You don't get to have mm. your life. You don't get to have peace of mind. You don't get to have happiness. You don't get to have any yeah. of that stuff. It's the most disempowering argument. Like, see why I did this? Because you don't end up feeling anything but bad after that. Like, you feel trapped. Yep. Like, and of course, this is my yep. life forever. And, and it's just because you keep telling that stuff. I love that. The only result you get is being right. <laughs> That's it. And we do, but people love that. See how right I am about that's why people wallow. We all know those people. We all know those people who just love to complain because they feel right about it. Or they, if they've been unjustly done, they just bitch and bitch and bitch about it. Right. right? Because, and it feels terrible and no one likes hearing it except that one little thing in your brain that goes, I'm right about this. I'm so right about this. And that one little chemical addiction that that person has was what keeps them in that behavior because they don't yet have another one that makes them feel better. So we have to create something that says, Hey, how about if you've got a brain that says, yeah, that's right. And you got to feel good. And it was empowering thoughts because it's just a choice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That ownership piece, you know, that transition, it's like for me now, when I, because obviously I get triggered and all sorts of, you know, I have all sorts of reactions still, but like afterwards I'm like, ah, when I'm like, what is going on? Like, what, what is that? How come you're getting so upset about that? Let me think here. And it's like that ugly, nasty pill swallowing of like, Oh, I think that I feel like I need to be right. Cause of this, it's like, shit, well, what if you were wrong? And it's like, it, it, it's, it's, it, it's, it's not pleasant, but, but it is afterwards. It's so, it puts you back in the driver's seat, just like you were saying before, you know, what I do with people at the end of the day, part of part of the exercise. And again, I was talking about, you know, 10 minutes in the morning, 10 minutes a night is not enough to change you. But I do have people do visualization in the morning and the evening, but nice. I also want them to nice. do it. It should be a sort of an ongoing thing. Because right now we're constantly visualizing what is or what we're scared of. It's just does it's not at the forefront of our mind, but it's going, it's going, mm-hmm. it's going. And so we have all of that to combat. So every free moment you've got when you're sitting around idle, if you're on the, wherever, you should Love be it. imagining the future you want. Because you're, if you're not, you're probably rumored about what's not, what's wrong with right now. I got all excited. Mm. I forgot my original point, mm. but that's an important one too. Okay. I have a question for you. It keeps popping up. So I don't know if this is the verbiage you use, but in terms of dealing with like the ego, whatever, do you use that phrase? Like the self-protective I'm right. This is the right way to be. And this is how I should see life, you know, and I, and I know you've come up, you must've come up across these kind of barriers so many times, right? Like it's like, like in mindset coaching, it's like, I feel like you have to be very careful and skilled with that because if you come up against somebody's ego too hard, you're not going to be able to go anywhere. Right. They're going to be like, no, this is the right way to be. And no. So like, I'm just curious, like in terms of, you know, when we feel our own ego coming out, which to me is like, I'm right. Screw everybody else. F that. Like, you know, this very like self, <laughs> yeah. uh, you know what I mean? Uh, how do you, how do you work with people around that? How do you, you know what I mean? Gently get well, through the ego. <laughs> I think at that, it, in that specific example, what I would intuitively say was how does it feel to be right right now? Mm. I love does it feel that. Good? Because we're here, we, uh, we've got all these feelings and receptors and we have the ability to feel great mm. and achieve great things. So don't you think that's probably why, you know, we should probably be, feel, be feeling good about things. So if, if your happiness is, is, the, is, is the, what's the word I'm looking for? If you lose that by being right, what's the freaking point? It's right. a, that's all ego. So yes, so it. a lot of times, I, you know, if I'm coaching somebody, I'm, I'm, I'm fairly direct, but loving. Right. But it's like I I'm very because I'm very logical. I like to break things down and and show them their thought process, basically, and then what it's costing them, you know, to and then what would it be like instead? And and again, anybody who argues that they are right about something is disregarding the fact that everybody else is wired differently than them. They're not going to interpret data the way that you do. And who's to say you're not freaking wrong. It might appear true in your universe in your reality, but you don't know what it looks like to them. And so, and we see this all the time. I mean, especially the past, I don't know, five, 10 years, 
people trying to sway everybody's opinion. And, you know, it's like, no, that's not, it that's, doesn't work that way. You know, yeah. it's like the, to, to the, the combativeness that we have because people have an opinion about something, even if we vehemently disagree, and a lot of people would, would we have to understand that this is their wiring yeah. and they don't want to change it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's a that's a, a a work in progress for me. I fully admit. <laughs> Sometimes you know, and it's it's tough. I think it's tough uh, to remember, at least for me, you know, where I'm at still is it's tough for me to remember sometimes that like that other people's experiences are going to cloth like how they're just like we were saying cloth their experience of what I'm saying so much that it kind of like doesn't do any good to like be. <laughs> inserting our opinions, you know, but it's yeah. hard. It, it is a little hard sometimes when I'm, you know, on social media and I'm just, I, I admit that I'm kind of unfiltered sometimes. Uh, it's just, I'm a little unfiltered, you know, and then it, it's a learning process for me. I get back some backlash and I'm like, okay, hold on a second. Let me see. Okay. Let me look at that from their lens. Okay. You know, so yeah. It, yeah. There's <laughs> boy, there's a lot I could unpack on that one. Yeah. I mean, like, oh, go ahead. <laughs> no, go. no, I mean, no, no, no. I, 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 I would feel, I would feel intrusive to do so at this point, but I mean, I, I, I do get that. It's like, I, I've somehow reached a point because I know I was very much a person who needed to be right, especially in, during my marriage. Um, I, I needed to be right. I needed my opinions to be heard. And if I didn't feel like I was being heard or right, I'd get really shitty about it. You know, I'd use sarcasm of this communication skill that I would wield in a really nasty way, you know, and I and again, nobody feels good except for that little part of me that said, yeah, that was clever. That was nice and sarcastic. There you, go. you know, it didn't change anybody's mind. Uh -huh. It didn't do anything. It just gave me that little jolt. And at some point, I realized that these all these battles that I'm fighting to get somebody to see my opinion, I, I suddenly could not give a flying. Like, I yeah. don't care. Like, I never express on any social media opinions about anything. Do I have opinions? Sure. But I don't, even in my real life, I don't go around and argue opinions because I'm so clear that it's only that. That, mm -hmm. that I cannot tell somebody their truth. And so I just am quiet. You yeah, know, and I, I and think... Any, uh... I think for me, it's, I never, ever want to insert my opinion and other people need to have my opinion. I think what gets me and, you know, I'm sure you could unpack this in like two seconds on me, but like what gets me is when I see that a lot of people have an unpopular opinion and there's no voice and I'm getting all these messages in the back end and I'm like, Hey, let's talk about it. Let's open this up. Let's, you know, let's give some voice to the unheard people. So that's my, that's my downfall is like, you know, all the back and stuff. I'm like, Hey, let's, let's, let's have a conversation. Let's somebody be brave enough to like, let's just talk about this. And, you know, I would never, ever want anyone to feel like I'm like pushing. I don't, I definitely, I've learned in my life that I'm, I was wrong completely. I used to be extremely religious. And so I went through a, like a complete and total ego death on that. Very right? <laughs> so turns out. I, I had, what's that? I, same, I said, we have a similar background. Uh, apparently, I had that yeah. same had that same thing too. Yeah. It definitely opens you up when you realize like that you were so right. Like I know I use the word, I know probably thousands and thousands and thousands of times. And then to find out that I didn't know changes you forever. And it kind of makes you like being wrong. <laughs> but it's, here's the thing. If you know something and it works for you, great. Yeah. Like it doesn't, it's like you can make your own truth. You really can it because your brain's ready to make up the craziest. I mean, look at what some people believe. Am I right? It's just it, the, it. And we all had this brain and it just the input created that for them. And now they just think crazy thoughts compared to what we think. But then they look at us and go, how do they think so struck? You know, it's just nobody's yeah. right. Right. I, I agree. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I, I definitely have a hard time with the black, white, right, wrong truth lies, you know, <laughs> yeah. probably from our similar backgrounds. I'm so far, I'm so about like minding our own business and, and truly mm. just creating the life we love and mm. just leave every, cause, cause we do, we get sucked into that. We trigger all of our old stuff. We're keeping mm. ourselves in a conversation in some cases, not all in mm. some cases that we don't want to. We're getting, we just feel we have to break all that behavior. We have to truly become the person we want to be. Does the person we want to be respond like that and do this thing? No, then we have to stop that right now. Cause what are we waiting for? Do we think that the, the something magical is going to happen? And then suddenly I'm not going to respond like that anymore. Nope. Mm -hmm. You're going to not respond that way. And then something magical is going to happen. Mm. All right. So let's go into um, the rewire now uh, quiz. Cause I, I took your quiz. 
It was very nice. Okay. Um, it's it's very so nice. I think that's the first <laughs> time I've heard anyone say that. Is well, I mean, I like I nice I love feedback. I love like kind of somebody just giving it to me straight, and I like to be challenged. I like to I like for my ego to be challenged. So if you like that, if you like kind of. And I like how you said, uh, what did you say? Straightforward and loving. Like that's definitely, yeah, I would say yeah, your approach. Direct. Yeah. Direct, yeah. but not in a, um, not in a, a way that would make you like reject. Uh, it was it, slightly no. just challenging enough. <laughs> yeah. So can you talk about, um, what you get, what you have coming in terms of, uh, or what, you know, if people want to partake of what you do? Well, sure. So the quiz is its own thing. And, and it's actually the transformation personality type quiz, because that's what identifies the, the types, yeah. the character traits that you may, you may ambush yourself. And by the way, if you take the quiz and you are that type, it doesn't mean that you're going to ambush yourself or, or cause, it doesn't mean any of that. But if you find yourself stuck, then knowing these types about yourself may give you some insight. So, and there's nothing mm -hmm. wrong with these types. I mean, I, I would have tested for, we have four types, people pleaser, seeker, wizard, and skeptic. And I would have tested for skeptic right off the bat. Right. And that's and that's a prime example of a type where I, I, as as many of the skeptics get the results they do in their life because they're asking the wrong question, which is why won't this work for me instead mm -hmm. of how could this work for me? Right. Mm -hmm. So that's so the quiz is and the quiz. Basically, if, if a person were just to go and take the quiz, um, they would be introduced to our program and how I work with people and all that. But mm -hmm. the. But there's I have a training, though, that I provide for free that people can do at any time to get sort of what we're talking about expanded and just mm -hmm. really because, like, like I said, I like to walk people through the logical progression of how did you get why it's one thing to say, yeah, I get it, I'm wired, but let's really walk through this so it can be true for you so that you can look at your situations and your circumstances and find some of the areas that may hey, maybe if I change this persistent conversation with myself, I get a different result. So that that training is there uh, that anybody can take for free at any time. Mm, and so do they just go to meetbobdoyle.com slash rewire now? Is that the main That's place or just meetbobdoyle.com is where they can find? Oh, meetbobdoyle.com slash rewire now is the way to do it. I mean, if they get okay, to meetbobdoyle.com, okay. they'll just meet Bob Doyle. That's just sort okay, of the general got side. It. There's, yeah slash we rewire now guys. And I'll put that in the show notes. So you guys can click that on everything and, so, and, and make sure we, you know, that we also have this on YouTube. So if you want to watch the video and um, you can see it there and we'll link it there as well. But Bob, thank you so much. You're doing big work. Appreciate, appreciate you coming on the show and teaching us a little bit more about it. And I hope I guys, I really like at least try his free training. Cause this kind of work is absolutely incredibly life-changing. I don't know anyone who has achieved uh, to the next level in life that hasn't done something like this, you know? So appreciate you coming on and it's sharing totally your my gifts pleasure. with us today. It was great Thank talking you. to you.